Welcome back to Calculus. Uh, this section is just a review, as I see here, the basic integration techniques. And so we're going to move through this pretty quickly. Each of these problems is pretty unique. And uh, just kind of build back up some of those chapter 5 techniques before we get into some more advanced techniques, um, starting in 8.2. So um, these are all problems, or actually most of these are problems from the textbook. And so I'll note that as we work through it. So the first one is actually example on page 500 and uh, I can't tell if it's 512 or 522. Uh, anyway, we'll just forget that. So anyway, the first problem example is T squared minus 3 over t cubed, negative t cubed plus 9t plus 1 dt. Example A. Okay, so this is kind of right in this, our go-to move in integration is substitution, right? U substitution. So you're looking for a good u du pairing. And we have a really nice one here because it, it, usually your u is in the more perilous, difficult position, that being the denominator. So u is a denominator. And the reason why it really works well is because du is one degree less. And the denominator, sorry, the numerator is one degree less than the denominator. So that's why it was a good choice. Now, I need to have this very thing in the numerator, but I don't. So, um, you could panic, but sometimes we have to split these. And um, we'll get into those again later. But on one like this, we can get by with saying, I really wish that that wasn't there, right? I really just want a 1 in front. So, what if I multiply both sides by negative 1 third? Then you have negative one third du, but look what happens over here. T squared minus three. This problem just happened to work out really nice. So now when we plug back in, we just have the integral of uh, u in the denominator, negative one third du. Let's just put a one up there. Uh, in other words, negative one third times the integral of u to the negative one du. Remember, this is a different integral. You can't just integrate that. And maybe even in this form, it's a little less familiar. All right, this is one over u. We're, we remember that this is the natural log of the absolute value of u, which ends up being. Uh, negative t cubed plus 9t plus 1. So, there is our basic u substitution. Make sure you're ready for one of those. Next up. This. Remember how to integrate one like this? Hmm, looks kind of simple. Not a good u substitution candidate. Okay, there is a way to do u substitution. Um, I'll mention that later. I wouldn't. When your denominator is greater than or equal degree, we usually divide, right? We do long division. I'm going to do synthetic here. Um, so we just end up with this means 2 plus 8 over x minus 4. That's what that is, right? That's our constant. That's our remainder. So we can now rewrite this as the integral of 2 plus 8 over x minus 4 dx. Or you could write the integral of 2 dx plus 8 times the integral of 1 over x minus 4. You don't have to do that step. But this first one is 2x, and this is 8 times, um, since this 
has a derivative of 1, you don't have to do your substitution. If it would make you feel better, do your substitution. But you could always just do this and check yourself. Does that really work? Is the integral of this really 8 over x minus 4? Well, let's see. It would be 8 times x minus 4 in the denominator, 1 in the numerator. Check. It is. So that is our answer. Now, I mentioned you could do u substitution in the beginning. You could have, let's just do a different color here. You could have let u be x minus 4. du would be dx. Um, numerator x would be u plus 4. Yes, an al what, what I call my students an Alfredo problem. Um, it's a bit longer. I, I wouldn't do that. Um, especially since it divides so nicely, but that would work to do that with Alfredo. Okay, well, let's review some trig problems. Our third example, integral of 1 plus cosine x over sine x dx. Change that one a little bit here. One. Okay. So what should we do here? Hmm. Is this a good use substitution problem? Well, the derivative of the denominator is not quite the numerator. The derivative of the numerator, actually, you could write it as a denominator, but u is never going to be the numerator. So in this one, since there's a fraction with the, denom de the denominator is the monomial, the single term, I can do this, right? And maybe this will be a simpler, two simpler integrals rather than one more complex. Um, actually, we can use some trig identities on both of these. This is cosecant. This is cotangent. Now we have to go back, way back in our memory banks to remember these. This one is negative natural log, and then like the derivative, it's cosecant with his buddy cotangent. And that one's not as bad. Remember, the negative is also like the derivative. The derivative of cosecant is a negative. Here, the integral is also a negative. Cotangent, though, is a little bit uh, peculiar. It's positive, and you have the sign in the absolute values here. So don't forget your integrals of your six trig um, functions. Example D. Integral of tangent x times natural log of secant x. You know, there's something like this. There's something fishy going on here. And these usually work out really nice once you see the trick. So what is the trick? Um, we can't multiply these together. Um, uh, trig identities, I mean, it's a, it's a log and a non-log, so there's, there's always going to be a product there. So, what do we do? Well, our go-to move is use substitution. Is there a good U-D-U pairing? Usually the thing in the more perilous position is your U. What's more pair? So, I guess our options are tangent X, secant X, or natural log of secant x. Those could be our u's. Tangent x is definitely not in the most perilous position, and our du would never be in the natural log, so that one's not a good choice. Um, let's skip secant x for a moment. Natural log secant x, the derivative, think through what the derivative would be. It would be 1 over secant x times the derivative of secant x, which is secant tangent um, and that would actually, wow, that might actually work. That wasn't my plan. I was thinking of doing secant x, but I think I am wrong. This is the way to go. If we did secant x, let's just explore that. It would be secant x, tangent x. And looking over here, I don't have secant tangent. So that one's actually out, and my one I didn't think was going to be it, is it? Um, so, because, as I'm showing you here, the derivative of this 
would be 1 over the thing you're natural logging times the derivative of the natural log. The secants would cancel, and I'd get the leftover exactly what I want. So let's, let's formally do that. If u is the natural log of secant x, and usually when you're picking your u du, think big. Try the one that's messiest first, and hopefully you can capture all of that into your u. So I probably should have thought that first. The derivative of anything uh, natural log, you throw the thing in the denominator, the numerator is the thing being, uh, is the derivative of the thing being natural logged. So just what we are hoping for, we have uh, tangent x dx, and this thing is going to crunch down really nicely to the integral of u du. So in other words, 1 half u squared plus c or one half natural log secant x. I'm gonna make sure that you can tell what's being squared, so I'm just gonna put it all in a big bracket. There we go, not too bad. Finally, last one. Integral of one over the square root of one minus four x minus x squared dx. Does it look familiar? Let's see, not a good division candidate. Not There's really no u substitution. If we let the thing into the square root be u, our d would be what? Negative 4 minus 2x. There's n doesn't, we don't have that. Maybe you recognize this um, when there's a constant up top and a square root down below, or maybe not even a square root, but something squared as when we often do arc trig. Um, and so remember this. Let's change the color up here. So recall, um, if you can remember what arc sine looks like, has a square root. Arc tan does not have a square root. Arc secant has a square root and a number out front. So this just has a square root. So I think it's arc sine. And remember, it's the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du is arc sine u over a plus c. So I want to make this look like uh, that, which means we have to complete the square. Remember doing these? Oh, yes. So completing the square. So I jumped right into a fun one. Uh, I need to factor a negative out of this, and let's put them in order. You know what, before I even put the, it'd be a minus one, right? But maybe you remember, no, I'll just take my time here. We'll do that. No, that makes no sense. Okay, we want to complete the square. So I want something in there. No, oh, that's not going to work. Let me extend this a little longer. Okay. I need to put something here, and I'll have to pay for it out here, to make the thing in the square root a, a perfect square trinomial. I want to make that a perfect square trinomial. So remember what we need to add? We want to add 4. Because 4 is half, half, oops, divide by 2, and then square it, right? So if I add 4 there, wait, I need to add 4 here. Let's just do it for a second. Oh, actually, that is right. I meant to make a mistake. Let's think. You might think, oh, add 4, subtract 4. But that's wrong because this negative here means this is actually a minus 4 is the net impact. If you were to distribute this negative through here, you'd have negative x squared minus 4x minus 4. So we do need to add 4 there. Okay, let's see what we have. Clean all this up. Let's put this ooh, 5 first minus, and this factors to that. That looks much better, right? Okay, um, and we are pretty much done. Uh, let's just do one little tidying up here. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I just do matching. I don't substitute. So let's go back up to the formula. 
I need a squared, I need a u squared, and I'll put u over a there, okay? Well there, so my u is x plus 2, so my du is, is dx. So that looks good, that looks good. But here it needs to be something squared, so it's not going to be square root of 5 squared. So my a is the square root of 5. Square root of 5, there we go. So we got it. Answer is arc sine x plus 2 over the square root of 5 plus c. You do not need to rationalize this. We just, at this point, we think, you know, we've done too much math to rationalize, so we don't typically rationalize these answers. If you do, it's okay, but we don't usually do it. So that is my review of, of 8.1, some basic integration techniques. Basic uh, is a relative term, yes. But I think you're really going to enjoy 8.2, so um, stay tuned. Be